Agamazing day to all. This is your Agamazing guru, Teacher Dan Rogayan. And welcome to another episode of our Left Review session. I hope marami na kayong nabasa at marami na kayong na-practice drill no? as part of your preparation for your board examination for professional teachers. Uh, thank you so much no, for all the support that you've been giving me uh, through watching my, our videos here in my YT channel. And uh, hopefully I could upload more no, prior to your uh, exam day, uh, despite my very busy and hectic schedule. So I hope you have your paper and pen, no? Uh, with you para samahan ninyo ako no sa pagsasagot ng uh, mga katanungan na naihanda na naman natin for today's video. Okay, let me first uh, share my slide. All right. So, we will have Prof Ed again uh for uh this time and uh help me no. Um I hope no as I read the questions uh you actually uh, analyze them and answer no, in your end there. And then we'll reveal again the answer and then we will uh, explain and rationalize this question. Right? So, of course, my fervent prayer for everyone is that you will be able to pass the board exam. Okay? Kayang-kaya yan, no? Basta patuloy lang kayong maghanda, patuloy na magbasa, patuloy na mag-review, at patuloy na manalig that you can, no? That you can. All right? So, let's start for the first question. From broad uh, vantage view of human development, who has the primary duty to educate the youths or children? A teacher, B parent, C the state, D the school. What is the answer? Teacher LPTs, no? Kind of confusing, but uh, of course we're we're looking for the primary, you know, who has the primary duty. Okay? Of course, these are the parents, no? So the parents have crucial role in educating the children. And so uh, it is really uh, helpful. It is really beneficial if uh, parents would be able to make the ha the home, you know, a good place no, for learning, you know, a good or conducive uh, learning environment as well. And uh, of course, they have to support their children no, in their education. No? Uh, according to this, no, um, Infographics, parents are the primary stakeholders in their children's education, healthcare, and future. First in responsibility, first in decision making. And so uh, parents are seen to be the primary uh, education providers no? uh, in this context of education. So tatandaan, pag nakita, uh, primary duty is to educate the young no? from the very, from the broader vantage view that these are the Parents. Okay. Second question: When you begin teaching with the generalization, then bring in details. What method do you employ? A deductive. B. It depends on quantity of details you bring in. Letter C. Inductive. Or letter D. It depends on your type of generalization. So this is something to do with uh, facilitating uh, learner-centered teaching. Okay. So the answer here is, of course, from general concept to detailed or specific concepts, these are deductive. No? So pag nakita sa board exam, from general to specific, from generalization to uh, details or small details, specific details, deductive. But if it's from specific uh, to general, then that is inductive. Specific to general, inductive. General to specific, deductive. So for deductive teaching, usually... Um, na i-sponfeed na ninyo yung mga information sa students and then they will just um, summarize no, what you have taught. For example, uh, you're using PowerPoint presentation, then doon na lahat yung lecture mo, you're just explaining them, uh, explaining these concepts to them and then you give specific examples. That's, you're actually doing deductive teaching. No? But if, for example, you give very abstract specific details and then you let them Okay, for example, uh, analyze it to form a generalization or to form a specific conclusion, then you're actually doing inductive. So, ang ina-encourage natin, no, para mas maging center, uh, mag, mas maging student-centered, yung teaching is that we use inductive approaches or inductive teaching, no? So, you can see here, no, when we actually, um, Use deductive approach. You overtly explain the rule first, then you provide specific example to reinforce. So for example, you have, for example, rule 
in grammar and then you give specific example, deductive approach. But for inductive approach, on the other hand, you provide specific examples. For example, you give a specific sentence and then you're going to ask your students to infer or deduce the rule. So this could be kind of uh, enhancing their critical thinking skills because they are actually being engaged no, to really uh, form a conclusion, form a rule, or actually formulate their own deduction or inference of your list. So again, the inductive teaching, inductive approaches are better uh, no? and hopefully we, we employ this oftentimes. Okay. Except, for example, of uh, you know, uh some circumstances or some some um situations that we need to really use deductive. Okay. Next question in her desire to finish the content of the curriculum guide or plan, teacher Carmel just lectures while students listen. Which principle of learning is violated in this case? A learning is collaborative and cooperative. B, learning is an active process. C, learning is, is the discovery of personal meaning of ideas. Or letter D, learning begins with setting of clear expectations and learning outcomes. So what is actually violated in the situation where a teacher just lectures while students possibly listen? Of course, that is letter B. Because students are just listening, that is positive learning because they just listen. No, there's no interaction. There's no activity. There's no an interactive or active uh, engagement by the student. So we violate the principle of learning as an active process. Okay, sabi nga ni Dale Carnegie, learning is an active process. We learn by doing. So meaning, we have to involve ourselves. We have to do it. Uh, we learn better when we do it, when we practice it, no? And only knowledge that is used sticks in your mind. No? So when we use no, every day, for example, when we connect this knowledge in our every uh, day life or real life situation, that retains, that sticks to our mind. Kaya nga, uh, make sure when we teach concepts no, in, in, in our own subject or in, or in our own uh, field of specialization, we make sure that we connect it to the real life concept, a uh, context, a real life scenario, so that students will be able to retain that particular concept. So, pag review ganon din, pwede niyo um connect pa sa mga nangyayari sa buhay niyo yung mga konsepto para madali niyo matandaan at hindi niyo mabilis kalimutan. No? So, yung mga concept, for example, ng Gen Ed or even ng Prof Ed, tignan niyo sa anong pwede mga uh, real life context ma uh, connect to. Para sa ganun, when you see it, for example, when you uh, find it in the board exam, madali na lang ninyo. Okay? So next, how can the multi-grade system be set in place in order to respond to the needs of remote elementary schools where enrollment is low? A. Upgrade students to higher levels. B. Mainstream special students with regular students. C. Combine two to three grade levels. Or letter D, assign teachers to specific level. Okay, what is the answer? Future uh, LPTs, no? How can we actually uh, respond to this in a remote elementary school where enrollment is low? And how can we actually uh, integrate the multi-grade system? Of course, that is letter C. Diba remember when you say multi-grade system, this is actually a class with two or more uh, um grade levels no and usually we do this first because um low enrollment secondly because there is a scarcity of teacher but sometimes usually these are done or this can be seen in the far flung area so yung mga nasa liblib na lugar mga liblib na eskwelahan no kung saan maliit pa lang yung populasyon so pwede nating uh, pwedeng gawin is the multi grade system so ang gagawin ko combine natin yung dalawa o tatlong grade level sa isang klase. But of course, pwedeng gawin dito, there is a differentiation or differentiated instruction or differentiated approach where each of these grade levels, I mean, the different grade levels in that particular class have different uh, tasks or activities. Okay? So letter A kasi upgrade students to higher level, um, hindi, walang konsepto ng multi-grade system. Eh? Kasi uh, we assume here na kanya-kanya pa rin ng grade level. 
technically mainstream special students for regular students, uh, medyo hindi pa to appropriate, especially if, for example, yung mga special stu students are not re really ready yet to be mainstream in their regular class. Kasi, of course, you know very well that SPED students have different and specific and special needs that the teacher must be able to address. So, hindi base-base mainstream. No? Dumadaan ito sa assessment bago sila mailipat, bago itong mga gifted or special education students ay mailipat into a regular classroom. And then literally assign teachers to specific levels. Um, wala pa rin concept to ng multi-grade uh, system and the, we are not addressing uh, the low enrollment here. So, the best answer here is letter C. Right? So sabi nga, no, multi-grade teaching or MGT is a teaching pedagogy that all pupils with different grade level, ages, and abilities are taught simultaneously in the same classroom. For example, ako, ang teachers, teacher dan, and then I have, for example, 15 students, 5 are grade 1, 5 are grade 2, 5 are grade 3, that I'm actually in one classroom. So that could be uh, considered as a multi-grade classroom or multi-grade teaching. Okay? Next question, Philippine Association for Teachers and Educators, or PASTE, proposed a new curriculum for teacher education to make graduates globally competitive. What type of curriculum is this? A, assess curriculum. B, recommended curriculum. C, hidden curriculum. D, supported curriculum. Okay, nag-proposed ng bagong curriculum ang PASTE. PASTE is actually a professional organization for teacher education. A, ano daw classic curriculum? Of course, that is a recommended curriculum. So pag sinabi natin recommended curriculum, usually ito yung mga curriculum na nare-recommend or um, dito ina-impose ng Department of Education, ng Commission on Higher Education, or different professional association gaya nga ng PAFTE, uh, in the form of memoranda or policy standards and guidelines. Kaya nga, Sa, sa CHED, di ba, lagi natin nakikita or every degree program meron siya ang tinatawag na PSGs, Policies, Standards, and Guidelines. Di ba? So for example, yung ating uh, Bachelor of Secondary Education. So, CHED Memorandum Order Number 75, Series of 2017. So, that is the CHED uh, CMO, which actually uh, contains the PSGs, Policies, Standards, and Guidelines of the secondary education in the Philippines. Okay, so usually they came from government agency. Assess curriculum, on the other hand, evaluated after it has been taught. No? So, ina evaluate yung curriculum after uh, ma deliver or after ma ituro. No? It can either be assessment of learning. So, for example, if the teacher uh, gave, for example, a quarterly exam, okay, that particular form of curriculum is can also be can now be considered as an assessed curriculum. So pag nakita ah, okay naman no, mataas ang nagkuha ng bata, mataas ang naging performance niya. Ibig sabihin the curriculum content and even the of course the instruction, the delivery of the teacher is effective. Okay? He then or implicit curriculum is also known as the unwritten curriculum. So usually ito yung mga uh, dito lalabas mga peer influence, school environment, media, parental pressures, societal changes, etc. At yung mga natututunan nila outside, it could be outside or could be in the uh, outside the classroom or outside the school, no? na mga values and some other learnings. Kaya siya hidden. Hindi man na itutura no? as part of the curriculum, but they can learn it from their immediate uh, environment. The supported curriculum, uh, it includes support materials na kailangan ni teacher to deliver the curriculum. This include print materials such as short books, modules, and other instructional resources, and non-print materials such as ano yung mga non-print natin. Pwede mga educational websites or mga e-materials na mga open educational resources that we can find online. And of course, facilities like laboratories, libraries, uh, even playground, no? because it also helps them to really Joy, no play based learning and other like. So basically, these are some of the types of curriculum na pwedeng no, maitanong sa inyo sa board exam. Basta pag nakita, che, DepEd recommended or DepEd proposed or DepEd approved, these are recommended curriculum by assessment of learning, assess curriculum, values uh, learned outside the school, hidden or implicit curriculum, and then teaching resources, teaching materials, supported curriculum. Okay? Next question, 
what applies to metacognitive thinking skills in learning? A, problem solving. B, monitoring own comprehension. C, emphasis on independent learning. Or letter D, factual and concrete thinking. Medyo magkakapareho, no? Medyo magkakamuka. But when you say metacognitive thinking, so pwede sigurong tanggalin na natin dito ang letter A and letter D. Pwede tayong pumili from B and C, no? So metacognitive thinking kasi is thinking about thinking, di ba? Thinking about your own thinking. So pwede kasi may emphasis siya sa independent learning kasi siya yon, di ba? Pwede siyang magkaroon ng Dependent learning or self-directed learning. So, siya, istudyante yun, no pwede. However, we are looking for the best answer and because we think about our thinking, we monitor our own thinking. We monitor our own knowledge. We monitor our own co comprehension. And so, letter B is the best. When, when a student monitors his or her own comprehension, he is actually applying the metacognitive thinking skills where he actually thinks about his or her own thing, right? So next question, which of the following construct is not at the level of critical thinking? Okay, A, grouping and classifying, B, preferring and evaluating, C, associating and grasping principles, letter D, guessing and believing. So we're talking about critical thinking. No? So what, that's one of the 21st century competencies that we need to uh, inculcate or develop a martyr. So, anong hindi kasama sa constructs ng level of critical thinking dito because it doesn't follow the, um, you know, uh, scientific method. It doesn't follow uh, basic science process. Yeah. Of course, that is letter D. Guessing and believe. When you just guess and then you just believe, you're just assuming, you know, there's, it's more of assumption, making assumption. And that cannot be considered as one of our critical thinking. So critical, you can actually group and classify them. No, you you analyze it when you group, categorize, or classify. You're using your your um anal analytical skills there. When you prefer and evaluate, you're using your judging skills there. You assess no? your assessment skill. When you associate and grasping principle, you also kind of analyze here and you kind of um you know, better synthesize, for example. You can actually connect uh, a concept to another. But when you guess and believe, you are just uh, making a supposition and belief. I think, I don't think, I wonder, I doubt, I don't believe, I suppose, I guess maybe I believe. So these are some of the uh, words, no, that could actually uh, lead to supposition and belief or guessing and believing. All right, so next question, what comprises computer competence? Uh, a, spending days and nights on computer games and downloading internet materials. B, use of the computer for particular use, such as emailing. Letter C, general knowledge and experience in using computers. Or letter D, knowledge of the use and how to program computers like blogging. All right, computer computer competency. Ayan, halos pare-pareho, no? But pwede na siguro tagalin na natin letter A, spending on computer games, not really... Um, although... Pwede naman, no? it's one of the functions of computer, but in the context of education, medyo off na yan. Uh, general knowledge and experience in using computers, pwede. So, pwede natin isama yung letter C. Use of them for particular use. Emailing, pwede rin naman siya. Okay, knowledge of the use and how to program computers. So, basically, from B, C, and D, the best answer here as, as an unbarrelled term is, of course, letter C. No, I let me be, I mean, knowledge of the use and how to program computers examples is blogging. So our knowledge how to use and how to program computers is our computer competency. Yung letter B kasi, use of computer for particular use, uh, very ano siya, limiting kasi particular use lang siya. So parang very limiting siya, not really an umbrella term. General knowledge and experience in using computer Pwede rin naman to, however, um, using lang siya. No? So, technically, uh, more than using, meron din tayo how to program. No? How to program computers that's also part of our company. Ito, kompleto si Kados on the use and how to program. Example is, blog. So, these are some of the important computer skills. no Emailing, social media, and blogging. No? But we have to be responsible about it. 
software and hardware, uh, hardware development that's part of the programming part. Na, no? Spreadsheet and databases, then we do this for assessment, grading, diba? then databases, the use of our databases for our students, information. But of course, we have to ensure that we practice the data privacy law. Then graphic designing and word processing as part of our uh, creation of digital product examples, educational infographics, and of course, IT troubleshooting, part of the programming, where we actually um, troubleshoot some problems in our company. So that's part of our computer competency, our computer literacy. Okay? And I'd like to mention also, no, yung uh, favorite word na ginagamit ko is the word curate. No? So we find content that could be relevant to our audience or especially to our learners. So we get no, from the different, from the ocean, vast uh, repository of materials online, we can find them. And then, of course, we choose no, from these, um, probably dito, from these resources, we select the best. So, you create ngayon natin, no? tanggalin na natin itong dalawa. So, we retain this, for example, we identify the most relevant and engaging content and add value. So, curation yan. Like, for example, ang dami mong pinagpilian, pero nakapili ka ng, for example, ng 10 materials na gagamitin mo for that particular lesson. So, for example, your lesson is about biodiversity conservation. So, nakapili ka na ng uh, photographs, nakapili ka na ng videos that you would like to uh, thread in your uh, slide presentation. So you create it. And then, of course, you will be able to share it via your learning management system or social media. If you're using social media and education, no? you share content with your audience across your channels. So, gaya ng ginagawa ko in my lecture videos sa ating mga review rationalizations, I make sure that I I, I, I find no the most parallel, the most uh, left parallel questions no para sa inyo, especially yung mga uh, frequently repeated questions na tinatanong ng PRC sa board exam in the context of gen ed and profit. And then, i-curate ko ngayon yun. So, sa dami ng tanong, i-curate natin yung mga pinaka-relevant. So, in this video, I actually included 11 questions. Okay? And then, these 11 questions, uh, pag na-curate ko na yan, nagkakaroon, na may curation pa rin ako ng mga images na pwede kong ilagay no? for, for, for your explanation, for you to be able to understand the concept better. And then, sinishare ko. So, how do I share it? Of course, through this platform. So, I upload this in uh, on YouTube no? so that you'll be able to, uh, you know, uh, listen to this. No? Kung an kahit anong ginagawa nyo, pwede nyo akong gawing... Uh, and and the dito music ninyo no for example kahit nakahiga kayo kahit nag uh, travel kayo nagluluto kayo naglalaba kayo you can actually multitask no while you're doing your uh for example household chore you can just play it on your phone or even on your laptop so, and then just listen no so hopefully i may na kukuha no so mag uh, iwan lang kayo ng likes or comments in the video so that malaman ko din that you are actually uh, watching the videos. And if you have, for example, more topics to share or to suggest, just comment down below kung ano pa yung mga gusto niyong topic na ilalagay natin for our uh, review rationalism. So that's it. No? Finding, creating, and sharing. Okay? So next question. Teacher Marlon used photographs to depict social problems such as war, pollution, and poverty. What is the principal benefit of the use of this instructional aid? Is it A, to expand interest, B, to provide experience of the problem, C, for emotional impact, D, to encourage participation? So why are we using photographs to depict social uh, problems or social context, social issue? That is because we want to have an emotional impact. So we, we, we are trying to develop emotional impact among our learners so that they will be positively disturbed and so they can actually propose or address some solutions about this problem by either uh, localizing some action plans no? or lobbying some policies and rules to their uh, legislators. For example, in their sangguniang uh, pambayan or sangguniang bayan or sangguniang pangkos. So photographs really is, um, you know, target students' emotional impact so that uh, they themselves can analyze what are the what are the roots of these problems and how can they address it. So, pwedeng gawin 
uh, the use of photographs can actually be uh, coupled with problem-based learning, wherein they can actually uh, propose a feasible solution for that particular problem. Okay, so this is an example of a photograph that the teacher can show to their students. A teacher can uh, elicit no some um views and opinions or point of view among learners and solicit no their feelings and emotion about this. So these are actually families now living in concrete pipes, used as makeshift dwellings along a street in Manila. Okay, so you can see no, you can see this that this is a picture of, uh, the a picture that depicts poverty. No, a picture that depicts um people living in the power below the poverty uh in 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 the in the poverty line no? in the poverty uh standard. So um, you can use photographs. I'm actually fond of using visuals and photographs. You can see that in the, in my slide presentations, right? So there you go. But of course, we have to always um make sure that we cre give credit to those who actually to uh, to the photo photographers who actually uh uh shot them. Okay. All right, next question. Which of the following processes usually comes first in developing curriculum? A identifying learning goals and objectives. B, selection of educational content, C, evaluating educational experiences, or letter D, organization of learning experience. So this is more of curriculum development. At tinatanong dito, what is the first step? Okay. Of course, kung titignan natin, pwedeng letter A and B. So tanggalin na natin yung evaluating and organization kasi medyo latter part na yan. So, from uh, between A and B, of course, the best answer here is first to identify the learning goals and objectives. Now, if you want to develop a curriculum, you have to have your objectives, the goals and objectives. From the goals and objectives or the learning targets, you select an educational content. After selecting it, you organize this content. And then after that, my implementation, and then later on, you evaluate that. Okay? So that's part of our curriculum development. So of course, you need to assess the needs. You select formally and you classify the objectives. Then you select and organize the content, just what I earlier cited. And then you select and organize the learning experiences. Then you evaluate the learning and then you implement the evaluation. So basically, this is the general uh, flow chart no, of curriculum development process. Okay. The next question, in order to most effectively teach students the way uh, to use election rights fully, what stimulation situation can teacher judge adopt? A, make students devise political posters. B, invite politicians to speak in school. C, involve students to enact a campaign and election. Or letter D, assign students to clip political news. So this is more like how election rights you know, in, a, in, a system, in a stimulation can be exemplified. And the best answer, the most authentic, the most... Uh, real life context where students can learn learn better is through involving them to enact a campaign and election. So they can stimulate a, a campaign. No, how can they campaign? How can they actually encourage their uh, voters to vote for them? And of course, to do election, to do a simulation of election. How can they uh, do simulation of this election by secret balloting phrase? Right? Ayan. Simulation learning, no? simulations are instructional scenarios where the learner is placed in a world. So in the example, we can place them in the world of actual, in the real world by, by exposing, immersing them in an actual campaigning and an actual votation or election, okay? Defined by the teacher. So they represent a reality within which students interact. So, so uh, apart from that particular example, another um, example of simulation is uh, the use of virtual simulations where uh, students can have virtual reality uh, and experience and simulate you know, the the the, uh, the real uh, context you know, by uh, immersing themselves into these uh, simulation uh, uh, devices such as uh, this virtual reality. So, pwede rin naman in the context of science, marami tayong mga virtual simulation where students can in, can can interact with no so if these are actually a uh, virtual simulation like for example uh virtual labs no virtual labs where there are no resources for example in laboratory they can actually click and interact online 
uh, and simulate the, the real experiments no, using uh, virtual application. So that's part of our simulation learning. Okay? And uh, that's it. Okay, so naka tapos na naman po tayo ng ating rationalization for our prof ed. Kung titingnan nyo, no, how can we uh, answer them, no, the, the way we answer them, the way we explain and rationalize them. And I hope na nakukuha nyo yung ating mga technique no, in order for you to be able to uh, better um, answer and you know, easily uh, point out you know, the best answer in your uh, prof ed uh, later on. Okay, so before I leave, I'd like to share with you uh, this one. This might this might be cliche to all of you, but study, no study, study smarter. Okay, success is no accident. It is hard work, perseverance, learning, study, sacrifice, and most of all, love of what you are doing and learning to do. If you love reviewing and you love studying and you love learning, okay and you sacrifice your time in watching my videos or in reviewing at your own uh, pace, that is commendable. And this will actually lead you to the fruit of success and the fruit of victory. And that you will be able to get uh, what you desire and that is your uh, professional license. So, wag kayong mapapagod. Wag uh, magigive up. No? It, it, it might be difficult. It might be challenging. But wala tayong uh, tawag dito, wala tayong maaani kung hindi natin ito paghihirapan. So patuloy lang kayong manalig, patuloy na mag uh, uh, basa, patuloy na mag-aaral, at patuloy na mag okay? So once again, uh, thank you so much for your time and uh, for being here in my channel. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet at kung bago ka lang sa channel ko, please uh, do subscribe so that you will get notified sa mga susunod pa nating uh, review video. Okay? So, thank you so much. No, Till our next review session. Happy reviewing!